So today we'll be talking about a new research initiative launched by the Center for International Regional Studies at Georgetown University in Qatar, um, titled America's Game in the Middle East, the 2027 Basketball World Cup in Qatar. The project actually builds on CRS's previous research initiatives um, on in the realm of sports and society. We have multiple uh, past research initiatives, including sports, politics, and society in the Middle East, football in the Middle East, uh, building a legacy, Qatar FIFA World Cup 2022, and most recently, uh, Qatar's World Cup goals moving from the periphery to the center. Information about all of these projects can be found on the CRS website at crs.georgetown.edu. So today we'll be talking to uh, the project's faculty lead, uh, Daniel Reiche, who is a visiting research fellow at the Center for International Regional Studies and visiting associate professor at Georgetown University in Qatar. So welcome, Daniel. Hi, Zuzi. Hi. So uh, just to kick us off uh, on what this project is about, uh, can you let us know why the International Basketball Federation, otherwise known as FIBA, uh, selected Qatar as the host? Yeah, I think uh, there is a push towards uh, Asia uh, in sports in general and in bas basketball specifically. So this will be the third men's basketball World Cup in a row in Asia. It was in 2019 in China and 2023 in uh, Indonesia, uh, Philippines and Japan. And in 2027, it will be in Qatar. And this is the largest growth market, not just for basketball, also in other sports. 60% of the global population live in Asia. And in the past, uh, as uh, basketball, men's basketball was dominated by the Americas and by, by Europe. And now Asia is catching up. So with the Basketball World Cup in Qatar, there will have been in the history of men's basketball 20 World Cups, 10 of them in the Americas, five in Europe and five in Asia. That's fantastic. And and why would Qatar be interested in hosting uh, the World Cup, the Basketball World Cup? So there are political and sports specific reasons. Political, Qatar is a small state that aims to overcome uh, its invisibility that it had, not anymore, that it had as a small state. Uh, it wants to attract tourists, investors, and have influence in international affairs. And uh, Qatar has developed sport as one of its key niche areas um, to achieve these objectives. Of course, uh, main focus is on uh, providing an increasing number of countries with its LNG, with, with, uh, with, with gas. Then it promotes a global media network, Al Jazeera, and it's very active in diplomacy, as we could just see in 2023 when it helped to release uh, Israeli hostages or uh, get, um, kidnapped Ukrainian children. So, but sports is like one of the four niche areas for Qatar. Other small states have other niche areas, Dubai tourism, Norway humanitarian efforts, and so on. So Qatar is just doing more of the same as they did in the past. I mean, they hosted many other sporting events in the past with the highlight of the FIFA men's uh, football World Cup in 2022, but this was not the end. Um, so it's, it's, I would even argue it's now more of the same uh, Formula One is next 10 years in Qatar, uh, and, 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 and now the men's basketball World Cup in 2027. Then when we look at sports specific reasons, um, certainly, um, uh, basketball is after, um, soccer, football is the second most globalized sport and Qatar wants to build up a profile to host one day the summer Olympic games. So we know about uh, the history of football in Qatar. Uh, we've spoken about this quite a lot in our previous projects, but what's the state of basketball in Qatar? What's uh, Qatar's relationship to basketball? Is there basketball federations here? Yeah, there is. And uh, basketball has been very important in the process of Qatar becoming an Olympic nation. So Qatar is a young country uh, that became independent in 1971. In 1979, it uh, formed a National Olympic Committee. And in 1980, this was approved by the International Olympic Committee. And in 1981, uh, which was an uh, important, uh, the IOC president, Samaranj, at that time visited for the first time Qatar. So to become a member of the International Olympic Committee, a National Olympic Committee needs to have at least 
five members that have been recognized by international federations. And basketball was one of them. Uh, football was another one, for example. So in the 1970s, uh, in total, six national federations were established. Um, basketball, football, handball and volleyball, and aesthetics and table tennis. And so basketball was one of the reasons why Qatar could become a member of uh, the Olympic family uh, in uh, 1980. Then um, Qatar did not make much headlines because of remarkable achievements. Uh, 2006 it qualified for the only time for the men's World Cup. It never qualified for the women's World Cup. The women made global hotline, headlines in uh, 2014 when they forfeit a game at the uh, Asian Games because they were not allowed to play uh, with hijab. Um, but since then, the FIBA has fortunately lifted the uh, discriminatory uh, uh, ban uh, of the hijab in 2017, uh, which is uh, now also, um, I believe, uh, a very important step to make basketball in Qatar, in the Gulf, in the Middle East more popular amongst women. Of course, basketball is also very important in some migrant communities. Uh, for example, we have uh, lots of people from the Philippines in Qatar. Uh, in the Philippines, it's the number one sport, um, basketball. And there's also uh, a Philippine basketball league, for example, in the country. Mm. So even though basketball is played all around the world, as you've just mentioned in the Philippines also, it's really largely an American game. Um, and it even features in the title of this project, right? It's the American game in the Middle East. Um, so what kind of opportunities does this uh, allow for the uh, connections, engagements between uh, the US and the Middle East? Yeah, it's as American as soccer, football, for example, British. It was invented in, 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 in Springfield, Massachusetts, and um, it became known and popular in the Middle East through missionaries. Um, and um, uh, one uh, example of that is that um, I worked before in Lebanon for 12 years at the American University of Beirut. And there is uh, evidence that Lebanon, uh, that basketball came to Lebanon through American missionaries who brought the game to the Syrian Protestant College as AUB was named at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, and from AUB, Syrian Protestant College at that time, it spread them uh, throughout the country. And we have similar stories in, in other countries uh, in the region. Um, and uh, But there are always the three M, so there are missionaries and there is military and merchants uh, who also um, brought like sports uh, to the region. Um, and uh, then if we look recently, um, there is big interest in the NBA in the Middle East. There, there was recently in Abu Dhabi in 2023, uh, a preseason game of two uh, NBA teams. Uh, the Harlem Globetrotters, it's like a show team uh, in basketball. They have been uh, uh, performing in the region. And interestingly, in 2017 uh, in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, right at the time when Saudi started to open up. So there's uh, lots of evidence how um, um, the game um, came from America to the region. But I think it's also for the region an opportunity to engage with the US because it's the only uh, American game popular in, 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 in Qatar and the region. So the four big sports in, in the US are American football, baseball, and ice hockey and basketball. And the other three sports, there is hardly any presence uh, uh, in the region. For example, we have one ice rink in Qatar. Um, but so basketball really provides opportunities uh, for engagement and, and interaction. Uh, for example, also for students um, uh, who could have exchanges. Exactly. And basketball is really popular on American university campuses. Um, and Georgetown has also a strong uh, basketball team. Yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, some people say nobody would know Qatar without the FIFA World Cup. And uh, one could also say uh, not everybody would know Georgetown without its basketball program. Uh, of course, Georgetown is well known for uh, its academic merits, but uh, but 
basketball made a major contribution to to make Georgetown a national brand in the US and beyond. Uh, so the men's basketball team is featured on national TV and uh, everybody who's reading the sports section would would like read about the, the, the Georgetown team. Uh, the Georgetown men's team plays in the same arena as a professional NBA team in Washington DC plays. It's now named Capital One Arena. It always has, is named by a sponsor. And uh, it has a capacity of 20,000. And uh, just like recently, when I was spending a week on main campus, I went to two matches, which were attended by around 10,000 people each. And um, so Georgetown became national champion in 1984. It made it um, a couple of times um, to the uh, uh, final four, to the March Madness. Uh, although the last time in 2006, which is a while ago, but also the women's basketball uh, attracts uh, larger audiences. And um, so it's super important, but also for one other reason. Uh, Georgetown was considered to be a wide academic community until the years after World War II. And basketball really helped to better engage with the city because the largest ethnic group in, in Washington DC are African-Americans. And Georgetown was also one of the first teams that had a black coach in 1972. So um, it helped Georgetown transforming into a more diverse community. And here in, the, uh, in, in, in Qatar, of course, our students also play basketball and both male students and female students. So it's one of the few team sports where we have teams in both. Uh, uh, and. Uh, and uh, basketball, um, different to football, operates in education city in in a mixed gender environment. So I could also go to a match, for example, and support our students. That's great. So for this project specifically, what what are what are you thinking? What are the pillars uh, that are going to guide uh, this project? What kind of uh, initiatives are you going to have under it? Yeah, I. I think, of course, our main objective is to have an academic output as we had in a previous sports projects. So I put them here in front of me that were two books with, that were the outcome of uh, sports projects we were running in the in Sears. Um, one of which and, you're a co-editor, right? Yes, uh, of this one. And um, so, uh, and, and, and Sears operates after a well-established model. So we, we gather experts, local and international experts, and we discuss research gaps and uh, in, in one meeting and later on in a later meeting, um, then uh, so topics are distributed. And, and in a later meeting, we would discuss papers, which will finally turn into a book publication or in a, a special uh, a issue of a academic journal. Um, and uh, different to uh, uh, the previous projects, we will not just approach um, people, we will also have a call for paper to, to have, give really everybody the opportunity who has interest and knowledge to um, make a contribution. Um, but uh, also what we learned from the FIFA World Cup project is that we want to go beyond that and also contribute to constant knowledge production. And we will do so with, with this vlog where we're just now producing the first episode and, uh, and the lecture series. And um, so we, we, we hope that by doing so, we can form a community of, of um, scholars, but also practitioners like journalists who are, are, are interested in the topic, who have knowledge and who are willing to share that. And um, so by doing so, uh, we hope that we can uh, contribute to a better understanding of the role of basketball in Qatar, in the Middle East, uh, but also the, the, the role basketball plays for U.S. engagement with this part of the world. Thank you, Daniel, for that very interesting uh, overview of this research initiative. And anyone who wants to find out more about it, it's on our website, cirs.georgetown.edu. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you.